I got um, two components of um, no evil fur. Okay, go. Two components of silicon. I'm making a mold. I'm using um, this stuff, which I have a very good experience with. This is Wagner Sill, uh, a large jar of a green and a white. So, as I said, two components. The mixing uh, ratio is one to one. What I'm doing is, um, remember those, uh, let me show you, hold on. Those pieces of streets, uh, things which I've been making with uh, resin. Um, I'm getting extremely, oh, hold on, here it is, the mold, by the way. Um, it's getting more and more difficult to get the, uh, the resin out of the mold. I think either the mold is something wrong with it. Or I have no clue what's going on, but it's it used to actually go out extremely smoothly, but lately uh, I'm having extremely trouble in uh, getting the uh, the resin out of the mold, and sometimes the mold actually tears in the resin. So what I'm doing is I take one of the um, the better the better version of the uh, the um, the street which I have uh, oh, which I have taken out the mold, um, and I added some of that. Uh, silicone onto it and also have over here a small tray with the with about four or five millimeters of that silicon so what I'm going to do okay well that silicon we have has, has dried so I'm adding this silicon now onto the top of the street turn it around and Push it down onto the existing tray. I will require a little bit more silicon right now. The reason why I'm doing in this like like so, like um, is to prevent any air bubbles to appear between the silicon mold and the uh, and the actual resin uh, street part. Because I have added the silicon mold directly onto the street part using a brush, so um, there is no air bubble between those two. Now I need to make a little bit more. So what I have here is a old kitchen scale. So let's see. Um, I have to guess. Let's say I put in about six grams of the green stuff. Six grams, all right. And of course, and I need six grams of the white stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm going to create a new mold out of uh, fresh silicon and let's see if that will actually help me. So, okay, so six plus six makes 12. So we got now 12, four, well, 12, 13 grams of um, the uh, the two component silicon i'm going to stir it up so it is one homogeneous tray of light green this stuff dries also extremely quickly okay so we're gonna fill up the gaps I of course have to be sure that it is not going over the street part otherwise I won't be able to get this thing out okay that will do um, the rest yeah well that's too bad um, so I'll let this dry and then let's see if we can make actually a, um, a street out of this one about an hour has passed, so I'm going to now remove the uh, the resin from the mold and let's hope that uh, nothing goes wrong because that's always a crapshoot what goes wrong. Um, I'm going to start by dismantling the sides of the styrene uh, box which I've made so that if necessary I can make a new box. So I'm not going to completely destroy it, I'm just going to make sure that the sides are Open. Okay, now I'm going to pull off the silicon from the box. 
So far so good, but now here comes the question if this has worked. So far so good. Still a bit tacky, but all right, oh, let's clear it up. Let's see if we can actually can that's not going out very smoothly, but there it is. So we have here a new mold, which we're going to be using for the future. We're going to let this dry, of course, and then tomorrow we're going to put in some uh, resin to see if this will actually work. Okay, let's have a look if this has worked. I'm a bit overfilled over here, but that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, oh yes, that goes out a lot smoother. Not 100% super, super, super smooth, but oh, this is much, much, much better. Okay, so I did overfill it over here a little bit, but that's not a real problem. But, uh, oop, got some remaining silicon over here. So, yeah, that will mean that actually I can now continue keep filling this mold with resin and uh, well not so much resin of course next time but that looks good maybe I can actually no well we'll see when we get there maybe actually I can actually cut this off later but good that has worked what I usually do when I make a diorama I use a pre-made plank uh, like an old uh, photo frame which I find at a uh, a thrift store like this um, and you use these actually as the uh, the display for the uh, the m models and the dioramas I made um, I couldn't find an exact or a correct size for the Batman diorama the Batmobile diorama so I made one myself um, I tried to make it as symmetrical as possible uh, these all measure 12 centimeters and these are all angles, 45 degrees angles. So um, the reason for that is um, the building can go right over here. And then we'll probably have some room over here for the backdrop. And we have here the planks, which I have for the... Um, let's see, how did I put it? Oh, over here. So I'm going to glue the planks in. Uh, but I need some more, of course, because I have only enough planks now for one strip. And I got one over here, the older planks that can go over here. Um, we have some little gaps, but I'm going to fill these up using some resin. Um, I have to glue them in one by one. I'm going to use... Um, um, I'm not quite sure what kind of glue I'm going to use. I'm going to see if I'm going to use that, um, that uh, polyester glue. Uh, it's rather nasty stuff, but I'm still be certain that everything is secured in. Um, what it does mean, of course, I need a lot more of these plates. Um, let's see now. Do I? Have, oh, I have one over here. I can see. Yes, I got one plate over here, which I probably can use. Yeah. So I need to cut off this over here. Um, or I can use the plate over here. I, I need more plates. So let's say I put this one over here. That will mean I need at least one, two plates. And maybe I can cut off. So it's maybe one, two, three, four plates. And then use the spares for the other side over here. So I reckon about four plates. Four to three plates I need to finish off this, uh, this floor. I've glued several of these uh, tiles now onto the platform. Uh, as you can see, these are overlapping. It's no biggie because I'm going to use this little saw uh, but, and turning it over and then simply saw off the um, things that are overlapping and can actually use a few of these parts to fill up these gaps. Um, talking about gaps, I'm a bit concerned about these gaps over here. Usually these parts will actually, like a puzzle, uh, link each other, but you have to in this case, sand the entire um, stones so actually they will fit. Uh, I'm too lazy to do that. So um, what I'm 
most likely I'm going to do as soon as everything is in. I'm going to use uh, some UV resin, which I use for my UV printer, uh, resin printer, and try to fill up all these gaps. It's the same technique I use on the large Ghostbusters diorama, and hopefully this will work as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to now turn it over and saw off, as I said, saw off these large um, overlapping pieces using this hand saw. That's going to take a while, but um, let's see how much we have them left over. And I don't think we need to make another mold or another uh, demolding. I think we have enough parts now to finish off the entire diorama. Next phase. Now the uh, the panels are on. We're going to do the next phase, which is going to be, uh, yeah, I don't care. This is a filthy one. doesn't really matter. We're going to take uh, a bottle of our resin. We have here white. I don't care which color we use, but we're going to do a in this steel cup that will be more than enough then we take a bit of talcum powder or baby talcum powder and put it in there as well and I start mixing now the reason I'm going to use this talcum, talcum powder talcum powder I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it um, is we're going to thicken up the resin a little bit Not too thick, but thick enough that it will not run like water. Okay, maybe we could make make it a little bit thicker, but I think this will do for the moment. And now we're gonna just simply try to pour it into those gaps which we have. like so and that's the reason why i do not want it to thin otherwise it's going to just run all over the place okay now before we do any further i have here a uv light which we're going to shine onto the resin which will make the resin harden in a couple of seconds Just be careful of course that i do not shine onto this tray otherwise this is going to be hardened so see it's it's very hard now so we can actually now fill all the gaps and when that is done I can use the same resin but made a little bit more thicker and try to emulate those stones those bricks we have so you can see it is running underneath the uh, the floor pattern that's not that that's not so bad because because they are transparent if i put my uv light onto it it will actually also react as a glue so that's not bad either as i said we're going to do the entire panel and when it's relatively okay we're going to glue in the uh the side section the walls You can still see a little bit where the several panels were glued in, but most of it is actually now hidden uh, beyond uh, because of the uh, the overall black paint which I've sprayed on, which is going to act both as a primer and also as a pre-shade uh, color. Um, I also spray painted the backdrop, by the way, the. Uh, the back the back wing the backdrop which i've already glued in um let me show you what's going to happen next so as i mentioned the uh you can still see a little bit of the parts where it's been glued together but i'm pretty certain that if we're gonna put on our batmobile uh we're not going to see it, and even if we are going to see it, I'm going to make sure that several of the things that have been taken out of the car or pieces of other crap around, or maybe even the Jawas themselves, will be walking or standing around 
on most of these particular parts of the uh, the floor so they're going to be hidden um the most of these things are going to be hidden um with a black car and the black backdrop that's not going to work we're going to have to make this backdrop a little bit more uh, detailed a little bit more come forward so that means we're going to do some dry brushing we're going to do some uh, i don't have to explain what dry brushing is we're going to do some dry brushing on both the floor and the uh, the backdrop so that's our next step several layers of starting with very dark gray and then pumping up the lightness of the gray so we get a little bit more detail on the thing um we're also probably going to include some browns and some blues to simulate um the typical 1989 batmobile sorry batman movie colors the top section of the batmobile the uh the windscreen is already glued in and i also have masked off the windscreen itself and um apart from using masking tape i used some uh where is it? Oh, here we are. Some liquid natural latex, uh, which is normally used for making molds, but it can also work for a uh, masking liquid along the edges. So I think I have masked off the windows uh, correctly. Um, I'm going to temporarily oh, glue it inside the Batmobile, or on, actually on the Batmobile. That will allow me to spray paint the entire exterior of the Batmobile and do not fear that the windows will actually be covered with paint. Um, I said temporarily because I will of course take off the uh, top section, the canopy, after the model is completely painted. It's not going to stay on, it's not going to be slided forward or something like that. The Jawa spread will have taken it off. Um, there is a problem with the windows and the back. Now, these are also windows, which were actually supposed to be glued on the inside, but I can no longer reach them. Oops, I can no longer reach those. Uh, I couldn't even reach them um, before I glued the top and the bottom section together. So I just glued them from the outside and used some masking liquid to, um, to mask these windows as well. The, weird, by the way, these windows, bec because... Um, the back, the firewall of the interior is in front of the window, so these windows will never actually shine inside the tub. So I, I have no clue why those windows are there in the first place. These, uh, this along the window edge, by the way, is not the masking tape. That is, in fact, a specific cockpit glue, which will uh, glue in the windows in the styrene plastic, but will not damage the transparency of the window so it's 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 a, it's a cockpit glue the entire car is going to be spray painted anyway so i wouldn't actually worry about that what i am thinking but i'm not certain about is if i'm gonna remove this wheel arch over here and leave it barren i'm not certain if that's gonna i don't know i don't think i will um so that will be the next part of um, temporarily gluing this in, as I said, and then um, having prepared for spray painting. The, re the reason why I'm going to do a spray painting right now is so I have, after that, I have every possibility and every clearance to go do the inside, which of course is not going to be uh, f uh, glossy black. Now I'm putting it in a different light. I can see actually I have to do a little bit more uh, brushing. But what I did is I have placed all the items back into position. So this um, part of the body I push back, put back the uh, the hood and the thing in the back, and I also put back this thing over here. And I spray painted black, but I just see now putting in a different light. Uh, it's not very smooth. So I'll probably put some other layers onto it um the reason of course is because well the batmobile has to shine has to look like the batmobile in the grimy backdrop it uh i have already made so um as i said what i did was i just put these things onto it so i can just remove them when they're done and then i have to of course paint all the details later on but that is as far as i am right now so as I just said, I have to 
Ah, we do it again because it's um, it's not very smooth. I think I fixed most of the problems. I used this kit, which I got from a discount supermarket, which is to uh, repair scratches on an actual car. Um, I used these tubes and uh, a little bit of those very very fine grit sandpaper, and I think I managed to get rid of most, if not all, the problems. Uh, there's a bit of scratches on the roof, but we're probably going to do something with that later on anyway. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was. Um, while I was doing that, I had a uh, tray, a flexible tray of um, mold of several bricks and so forth. I filled it with um, resin, uh, which I mixed with some uh, some paint. And these came out. These are little bricks, and these little bricks are going to be used uh, not just for um, material in the background, but we're also going to use these to pop up the uh, the Batmobile there where are, there no longer are any um, tires on them. I glued on one tire, but uh, the other tire we're gonna. Just pop it up, pop it up, using these things like they were bricks, like the Jawas, the Jawas used some of those bricks uh, to pop up uh, the uh, the Batmobile on several places. So I've got the wheels over here, um, which are going to be laid somewhere around here, and maybe one of them going to be laid over there. We're going to pop up several of those bricks over here as well. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take out. All of these bricks and we're gonna probably gonna create a few small towers but just gluing them in like so and then we'll use these to pop up prop up the uh, the car and as soon as we get that done we can then actually glue the car into place into this position uh, so that we can maneuver all the other things around I need to remove these, of course, from... Oh, oh just one fell down. Anyway, uh, I need to remove this from the flash. But uh, I've done several over here, as you can see, a pile. And um, if we take the Batmobile and turn it upside down, I have uh, glued uh, several of these um, small little towers. I made little towers of these bricks. Painted them a bit dark gray. But... Uh, what we're going to do now is going to place the Batmobile into a location where it's not going to going to oh this is a location which I can use yes okay so let's place this over here and let's place um, oh I don't know this over here so at least I know where it's supposed to go. And if I have something else, like this tube, let's put it over here. So I know where it's supposed to go. So let's lift it up again. It's going to be over here. So I'm going to use my hot glue. And I'm going to put some dollops onto those towers of bricks. And on the... higher okay and now we're going to place it back where it's where it was it was over here somewhere okay and now i can remove these objects and all we need to do now of course is allow it to dry i will most likely put some more hot glue underneath to make sure it stays in the position but at least that is where the batmobile is going to go that is where she's going to stay and that is where we're going to have all the other stuff um, around it. And it looks like uh, things have been taken out. BNT custom made models and dioramas. Ha! <laughs> like you click and subscribe, you must. <laughs>